So in this module, we're going to talk about pro forma financial statements or forecasting financial statements. We'll talk about the, the uses of pro formas and they're a pretty important tool. We're going to focus most of our time here around methodology and end with a discussion of, of some of the key issues that are here. So why do we care about uh, forecasting financial statements? We care about them because they're one of the most important tools that we use in corporate finance and actually in finance in general. Uh, we're going to use them to estimate funding needs for, for a company. Uh, we're going to use them to do as a tool in evaluating credit worthiness, would you give a loan to this company? Uh, we'll use them in forecasting profitability, which is important <clears throat> for a whole host of uh, reasons. And later in the course, we'll use them as a fundamental stepping stone in valuation. And that's just a subset of some of the things that, that we use these things for. Pro forma statements are where this art of finance really begins to, to show itself. Uh, I'm sure that when you took uh, Fin201, whoever it was, whether it was me or other people, I know I talk about how finance seems to be very quantitative and deterministic, but really it's a, it's, it's, it's a much more subjective, qualitative field as much art as there is a science. And this is where we're really going to see this. And this, this statement, the second statement here, is, is very important. Forecasts are they're based on qualitative decisions, <clears throat> not just calculations, but qualitative decisions about quantitative variables. So we're making, we're making judgment calls about numbers, not simply calculating them the same way every time. So the same forecasting technique that you use one time may not work the second time uh, there, and that's really important. <clears throat> How do we do this? The, the most important driver is typically the revenue forecast. How are sales? How are they going to grow? What's the scale of the company going to be? Based on that, we forecast the income statement based on our revenue forecast and particularly what do you know about the company and what do you know about the industry? Uh, and this is the subjectivity. A good analyst processes all this stuff and makes a judgment. When the income statement is forecast, then we go to step two, forecast the balance sheet. Some of the accounts uh, change and relate to these changes in revenue. Others you have to individually forecast from here. And then step three is What's it all mean? Let's interpret, interpret the results. And one of the things I like to, like to say is that balance sheets don't. Now, what's that mean, balance sheets don't? What it means is balance sheets don't balance. <clears throat> You're used to accounting where you are doing double-entry bookkeeping, uh, assets equal liabilities plus equity. In this process, we are forecasting the likely values of all of these different accounts on an individual basis. And you can do a thousand of these over your career and you will never exactly balance when you get when you get done. That's normal. Uh, and so don't don't worry about the fact that it doesn't balance at the end. If it balances at the end, this is either a lot of like experience or probably you've done something wrong uh, from here. We'll need what we call a plug figure. There'll be a a number that we need to add someplace, and that number will be very important in determining uh, <clears throat> what this what this whole analysis means. If, when you're done, you have forecasted the amount of assets the company should have, and those are greater than the combined liabilities plus equity, now you've got a problem. You don't have enough financing in order to support the assets because your liabilities and equity. <clears throat> They're your financing for your assets. And if you don't have enough financing, you've got a problem. Now, maybe you've got some excess cash. You can reduce the amount of assets uh, that's there. Or can you raise, raise more financing? Can you, can you range for more debt or equity or a combination of the two? If the circumstances is reversed, <clears throat> assets are less than liabilities and equities, then in this case, you've got all the financing you need and more. You have excess financing. And so to make it balance, uh, perhaps you reduce the amount of debt. Maybe you buy back some stock. Or maybe you decide just to, to increase the amount of cash uh, because you're going to need some extra cash down the road. But that's how we'll make it balance. And we'll go through this in much more detail. <clears throat> Here is a, just a sample of what a pro forma statement looks like. Just talk about the pieces uh, that are here. We try to isolate our, our, our input variables up here. We have actual, typically, 
two or three or four or five years in your projects. I want you to have five years. We have historical numbers there. We'll analyze those statements with some common dollar stuff where we'll look at what they are on a percent of sales <coughs> or for inventories, receivables, and payables. We'll, we'll calculate uh, the days that they're outstanding uh, from there. And then we'll take all of that and begin to forecast all of this stuff uh, that, that is in here. And so <clears throat> those are the pieces of this. And we start with the income statement and work through the balance sheet from there. So the pieces here, key inputs, you always want to isolate the numbers that are likely to change. The one thing we know for sure about most of these variables that are up, up in this area is that our forecasts are not going to be precisely correct. We are not able to exactly predict to the penny what sales are going to be next year. The question is, can we get close enough so that we make good qualitative decisions about what we should do with this company. The same thing with cost of goods sold percentage, with SG&A percentages, uh, the amount of days outstanding in accounts receivable, or how many days inventory are you going to have in the hand, or how long are you going to take to pay your, to pay your payables there. So you want your key inputs there. The historical averages, poor, this maybe is the most important thing. Historical averages are a starting place. These are qualitative decisions about quantitative variables. Yes, we want to take a look and see what these variables were, but we do not, cannot mindlessly use averages or the last number. You have to take these and you have to process them with your own common sense and knowledge of the business. When you get done, balance sheets do not balance, and so we have the additional funds needed, which can be positive or it can be negative from here. And it is the difference between total assets and total liabilities and equities uh, that are here. <clears throat> so let's talk a little bit about forecasting specific things. Cost of goods sold is forecast as a percent of sales. So in the last few years here, we've had 80 80 and now 81 and so how, what's what's 2017 going to look like what's 2018 is this a trend of increasing cost of goods sold do we knew do we know that we're cutting prices and therefore driving up our cost of goods sold as a percentage do we know that there's more competition that would that would make this number go up or or down uh, changes that are there operating expenses selling general and admin depreciation and in some cases, these will be broken out in eight or ten different categories. Some of them move as a percent of sales. Uh, so if you've got things uh, like shipping costs, the more you sell, the more you have to ship, move up with sales. Sales commissions, the more you sell, more more sales commissions, they go up with a percent of sales. Other things don't move necessarily with sales. Uh, so your insurance costs, your utilities, depreciation, those numbers are probably not going to change uh, whether – whether sales up 5, 10, or 15 percent. And so those can be forecast uh, on an independent basis from there. Interest expense is a particularly challenging one because of this circularity problem that is here. And so we're often using these models to determine <clears throat> how much debt do we need to, to, to raise in order to finance this project. Well, therefore, interest depends on how much debt you raise, but how much debt you raise depends on how much earnings you have, which is partly dependent by how much interest you have, and so you get this circularity. What you often do there is this, what we call a multi-pass approach. First time through, either just put last year's, so maybe maybe we start by taking this value and just plugging it in here, uh, and then go on down through, calculate everything else. When we get down to the end and we say, oh, gee, we need to raise uh, $100,000 worth of debt, and we adjust our debt values, then we recalculate the interest and recalculate this number and go through it a couple of times. That's there. We'll do some of those examples. We get through this process. We forecast the income statement. Now we're coming down and forecasting the balance sheet. Cash... Typically, uh, we take the exact number across uh, unless there is evidence that the, cat, the company is operating at a very minimum cash level and needs, needs a little more cash every time sales grow just to, to keep, things, keep things working. Accounts receivable are forecast based on sales, what are, how much are sales going up, 
and the forecast of day sales. So we go back and we calculate here. And so if we look at day sales outstanding, it's taking them 42 days, 44 days, 43 days. Doesn't look like much of a pattern. If, we, if we're not making any changes to our credit policies, we might end up taking an average of those and plugging that number uh, up here in our, in our day's sales, which would be around 40, 43 days up here. Uh, that's there, uh, but you want to ask yourself: Will this will this thing change during the period of time? Inventories are based on cost of goods sold and on uh, the days in in inventory. Now, with inventory, if we look at these numbers here, they were 68, 66, but now they're up to 76. It looks like something may have changed. We want to explore: Are we doing things that we're we're stocking more inventory and thus increasing our costs? Is is competition changing? Uh, so we, we this would not be a place that an average would would fit very well. That's that's here. Prepaid expenses and accruals there <clears throat> tend to be very very small as they are here, four tenths of a percent. Those we just percent of sales probably take an average. Go on. Property, plant, and equipment is much tougher because of what we call this lumpiness problem. You can't buy half a warehouse. You can't buy 10% of, of a power generating plant of your power utility. You either build the whole plant, build the whole warehouse, or you don't. And so because of that, when you look historically, you will often see cases where the amount of investment in, in property, plant, and equipment is relatively low, relatively low, relatively low, really big for a year while they bring a new warehouse online, relatively low, relatively low, relatively low. And so you have these big lumps, this lumpiness, every few years. And so you've got to take that into consideration when you're forecasting. The other piece of, of net property, plant, and equipment is accumulated depreciation. The nice thing there is you have to have these, these consistencies here. So accumulated depreciation in this year was 74 the following year, our depreciation charge was 25, so 74 plus the 25 is the 99. And so the hard work is figuring out what your depreciation is going to be. Accumulated depreciation is last year's value plus this year's value. Accounts payable down here are handled like we did with inventories and, and receivables. They are based on cost of goods sold and the forecast in days. And here, Something has changed. We were paying in 10, in 10 days, 11 days. Now we're paying in 28 days. Uh, are we no longer taking advantage of 10-day discounts? Uh, are, 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 is something going on? We certainly wouldn't want to take an average. We'd want, to, we'd want to do maybe the next number in this trend is 35 days. And so we're going to want to do some exploring to make those decisions there. Debt does not grow with sales, just never does. Debt is something you have to arrange as a financial manager. Uh, some debt has payments showing in the current portion. So you'll have the current portion of long-term debt and long-term debt declining by that amount uh, each, each year that's there. So you, sometimes that happens. Lines of credit, LOCs, those are almost always current. And typically they're subject to borrowing limits. So you've got to pay attention to what the borrowing limits are before you let those things, those things grow. And in many times, we're trying to determine how big a loan do we need. So debt becomes the plug. Common stock, unless you're buying or selling, buying back shares or selling new shares, common stock, paid in capital, contributed surplus doesn't change. But retained earnings will change. And this is another place where you have to be consistent. And I want you, if you don't already know this, I want this committed to memory. This year's retained earnings is last year's retained earnings plus net income minus dividends. And all of these things have to be consistent. When you get through this and you forecast all of these individual items all up in here, all the way through here, you have a forecast of total assets. That's the amount of assets that we are forecasting that we need to operate the company. We forecast total liabilities and equities. That's the amount that we forecast will be available without us doing something else, taking out more debt, selling stock, those kinds of things. And so this additional funds needed that is here is now our critical number. It tells us whether we need more financing or whether we have a surplus of financing. 
some issues associated with this. This is critical. Garbage in, garbage out. <clears throat> if you're not paying attention, if you're just plugging mechanically numbers in there, these things will be these these models are just a waste of time. The value of the model is in taking your insightful qualitative views and turning it into financial forecast that's there. To do that, you have to understand the business. You have to understand the industry. Our colleagues in accounting talk about being conservative. That's not a political conservatism, uh, but conservatism as we talk about it in accounting is the idea that we always take the lower values. That so, uh, if if we think sales could be anywhere between five and twenty, well, we'll take five because that's a conservative value. Uh, if if we think our cost of goods sold uh, can be anywhere between seventy and seventy-three, well, we'll take seventy-three because we'll account for those higher costs. That's more conservative. Our accounting colleagues do that. We do not. Our Ver, our job as financial analysts is to be as accurate as possible. If you always take the worst case scenario, the most conservative numbers, you all, you're, you're going you're gonna to bias the results of this thing uh, there. Your statements must be internally consistent. So as we talked about, your change in returning earnings must income less dividends. Your property, plant, and equipment depreciation expenses uh, must, must uh, reconcile. I don't know if you've heard this term, perfection is the enemy of the good. But this is a case where it comes comes to bear. Some some of you are very, very precise, and you want the numbers to be exact. Uh, and, and initially, this stuff can drive you crazy because you can't get it exact. You're making forecasts of future numbers that will not, at some level of precision, be perfectly accurate. Our goal is not to exactly predict what these accounts are going to be to the penny. We can't do that. Our goal is to be accurate enough so that when we make decisions about whether we should invest in a plant, whether we should make a loan, uh, whether, whether we should invest in this company's stock, whether we are accurate enough that that decision is a good one. So critical important financial tool, forecasting, financial statements, creating pro formas. It's really where the art. Welcome, welcome to finance. Most important, it is not mechanical. Do not, do not, do not. I cannot stress enough. Do not simply every time take an average or every time take the last number and pretend it's going to be the same next year. You will, that, that will be wrong. It is based on judgment. We are making qualitative decisions about quantitative values. And then the best way to do this is Practice, 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 and we're certainly going to do that uh, in, in class and, and throughout this semester. I look forward to seeing you in class.